What's the best protein powder that money can buy? <sighs> well, to tell you the truth, the best protein that you can get is from food. Most of your protein should be coming from whole food sources like chicken, turkey, fish, or egg white. Nothing's ever going to be better than food, and that's what's going to help you build muscle. However, if used properly and at the right time, a good protein shake can be beneficial to both muscle gain and weight loss. You don't need to go out there and spend hundreds of dollars on a name brand protein because most of it is just hype anyways. However, in this video, I'm going to go over the main sources of protein used by most of the big name manufacturers on the market today so that you can make the best informed decision to fit your fitness goals. Whey protein is derived from milk and it's one of the fastest digesting proteins on the market today. Generally, whey protein is going to come in either one of three different forms. That's either going to be whey hydrolysate, whey isolate or whey concentrate. Now because whey protein absorbs so fast in the bloodstream, the optimum time to take it is either going to be post-workout, which means immediately after training or first thing in the morning. Now when purchasing a whey protein, you want to make sure that that whey protein is primarily composed of either whey hydrolysate or whey isolate. The reason why these forms of whey protein are going to be a lot more bioavailable and higher quality than a whey concentrate. They're also going to digest a lot quicker and they're going to be in your bloodstream in about five to 10 minutes versus whey concentrate, which takes about 45 minutes to enter the bloodstream. Also, whey isolate and whey hydrolysate have been through a lot more thorough filtration process to filter out excess unwanted fat, carbohydrates, and cholesterol. Now, because whey protein is such a fast-acting protein, it's also out of your system really quickly too, which is gonna bring me to the slow digesting proteins. Now, the best time to take a slow-acting protein is gonna be right before bed. The reason why is because a slow acting protein that digests slowly in the body is going to give your body a steady stream of amino acids throughout the night to keep you anabolic and to keep you from going catabolic, which is a muscle wasting state. The two best forms of slow acting protein to get are either casein protein, which takes about an hour to get into your system and is good for 48 hours, or an egg protein, which takes about an hour to get in as well and is good for about five hours. Egg protein has a very high biological value. That means that your body is able to assimilate and use pretty much 100% of the protein and the amino acids that make up an egg protein. The best form of casein protein to get is going to be an undenatured micellar casein. A protein blend, which is something newer on the market, is a blend between both fast and slow acting proteins. A good protein blend will have both whey, casein, and egg proteins in it. When selecting a protein blend, make sure that in the ingredient list, the proteins listed go from fastest digesting to slowest digesting. For example, you'd want a protein isolate followed by a protein concentrate and then maybe a casein or an egg protein. This way, you're going to get the desired time release effect. A protein blend is going to be the most versatile type of protein because you could literally take it at any time. You could take it for breakfast, you could take it in between meals, you could take it after workout, and you could also take it before bed. Protein blends can be used by pretty much anybody and I especially recommend them to beginners who might find it difficult to get enough protein in their diet throughout the day. Two quick tips. Two really good signs of a high quality protein are number one, mixability. If you mix up the protein, there's a bunch of clumps and it's really hard to mix and it just does not mix well. Chances are a lot of the fat, carbs, sugar, and cholesterol haven't been filtered out of it. Therefore, it's a little bit harder when you mix it up. A good, pure, clean protein should mix up very easily and shouldn't clump. Another thing too, this is a great tip. Look on the back. This is one of the proteins that I'm taking right now. Look on the back label of the protein and look at the serving size. So right here it says one scoop is a 28 gram scoop and the protein content is 25 grams. So 25 out of the 28 grams in each scoop is pure protein. So this is about 90% protein by weight. That's really, really good. Most proteins, especially name brand proteins, if you look on the back and do the same thing, if it's a lean protein, it should be composed primarily of lean protein. There shouldn't be any added fat, carbs, and sugar in it. But you'll be surprised to see that most name brand proteins are actually less than 50% protein by weight. So in conclusion, remember most of your protein, I'll say at least 85 to 90 percent of your protein intake should be coming from whole food nothing is going to be whole food so when in doubt just eat a chicken breast <laughs> that's going to be your best bet to build muscle so just to summarize really quickly if you're just looking for a post-workout recovery shake just go with your basic 
uh, whey, whey isolate or whey hydrolysate. If you're looking just for something before you go to bed, go with the casein or egg protein. If you're looking at, for something that you can take any time throughout the day, go with the good blend protein. So I hope that I was able to break it down for y'all and take some of the confusion out of buying a protein powder. Um, until then, until next time, baby, make sure to stay sworn in control. Young muscle on a mission. We ain't wishing. We just working hard, baby. I'll see you at the gym.